So good afternoon. We are going to work on um, a chapter five, six review worksheet today. And I'll stay on um, until just before three o'clock or whatever we need to to answer questions about the sample uh, midterm exam. Um, I thought I'd just go over quickly how the midterm will work. So hopefully everybody signed up for their time to take the midterm. If one of the times I gave does not work, you can send me a message and, or an email will work that out. Uh, you're allowed to use the yellow packet that you were provided in the course back along with two um, sheets that you can create on your own that are front and back two eight and a half by 11 sheets. So the day of the midterm, you will log into the Zoom. Um, all of my links are the same Zoom, so click on whatever <coughs> wish you. And you'll click onto the Zoom, and I prefer that you click on with your phone so that you can <clears throat> um, prop your phone up so that I can see you working on your device, your device meaning your laptop or computer or whatnot. Um, that way I can see that you only have either the midterm pulled up or stat crunch. So those are the two things that um, that you would be able to um, to have. Uh, so I once you're logged into the Zoom, um, I email you the midterm. You can either print out the midterm and write it on paper and then scan back in. You can save the midterm to your computer and type on the midterm if you so choose, or you can use um, a PDF kind of a app so that you can just write on the midterm as well with your mouse or a, or a, um, a pencil stylus on your computer. So that's up to you. Those are kind of the ways you can do the midterm. Um, and yes, you may use that crunch. That's what I'm planning on you using since that's what we've been practicing mostly with. If you have an extra calculator nearby for extra calcul you know, calculations, by all means, you can use that as well. Um, just not your cell phone. So um, every once in a while, I may ask you to like show your space, move your phone around or whatever, but um, for the most part, you can just work. Most students are done easily within three hours between one and a half, two hours, I'd say for the midterm. Any other questions for my live folks on the midterm, how that will go next week? Um, so today I thought we'd work on this extra chapter five, six review worksheet. I think it's, three pages, four pages, um, and it's just a great review of all the topics in chapter five and six. Uh, so page 534 is where we'll start. So it says, suppose the average free throw percentage of an NBA player is 77%. Um, so they, the chances they will shoot a successful free throw um, is that 77%. You're going to randomly select three random independent NBA players and have each of them shoot a free throw. For each player, how many random outcomes are possible? What is the associated probability for each? So there are two outcomes. And one of them could be a success. So they make the free throw. And we said the probability of success um, is equal to 0.77. And the failure in this case is they miss the free throw. Which is the probability of a failure. And so that's one minus success which is 0.23. How large is the sample space? <clears throat> so the sample space is, there are three players, they said, right? So it would be player one, player two, and player three. And they each have two possible outcomes, right? Either they make it or they miss it. And because player one, player two, and player three are independent of one another, they already told us that, um, we can multiply their possible outcomes together. So two times two times two means there's eight outcomes in our sample space. So using a tree diagram, construct the sample space of all possible outcomes. 
So player one, right, has a success or a failure. And then player two also has success or failure. And so they could have been successful on player one, player two could be successful, or player one could have been missed, right? Um, but player two could still be the two possible outcomes of success and failure. And then we have the outcome of player three. of success and failure. And so where the eight outcomes in the sample space are, are these end result here. And so let's write those in another color so that we can <clears throat> clearly see those. So that first possible outcome would be success, 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 right? And then the second one would be made it, made it, missed. And then made it, missed, made it. Um, and say made it in, in <clears throat> um, trade off of success. So success, failure, failure. And then, so notice that the first four were all where player one was successful and the last four are gonna be identical. The only thing that will be different is that the first player missed theirs, right? So. And the last one is where all of them missed. So this is what we conclude is the actual sample space. If I ask you to do a tree diagram, I expect these, the actual end outcomes to be there. Explain why the outcomes listed in the sample space are not all equally likely. Anybody wanna throw out their idea here? Because not everybody may have the same um, success. True. So, so making it or missing it is not a 50-50 shot, right? They're right. more likely to make it than they are to miss it. So, so this is way more likely that they all make it, right? Because they have a 77% chance of that. The likelihood that they all miss is actually very small because it's not likely that they're going to miss in the first place. Right. So, um, the probability of success equal to this and the probability of failure equal to this is why they're not all equally likely. Any questions so far, how we got here? So you can kind of see we're setting ourselves up for chapter six, right? The, bin the binomial um, experiment where we talked about, we have two outcomes that are independent outcomes. So let's move to page 535. It says, use a multiplication rule in showing work. Find the probability for each possible outcome in the sample space and construct a distribution of the results at right. So um, make sure also on the midterm that you're showing work for your probability. Because uh, on, on the worksheets, I've been pretty gracious about assuming people are using their calculator on the side, but you should be letting me know what things you're multiplying. So we're going to just take my list of eight here, and I'm going to translate those into the outcomes here before I find those probabilities. So there's my eight outcomes. Okay. 
<clears throat> okay. So the probability of all of them being successful is that 0.77 cubed because each of them are going to have that success. So that's 0.77 to the third. And so using four decimals, that comes out to be 0.4565. And then the next one is 0.77 squared for the two successes. And then the third person had a failure. So that's 0 0.1364. <clears throat> now, because order doesn't matter, the second, per, the second outcome here, SSF, is really the same as SFS, right? You still had two successes and one failure. So that should also be 0 0.1364. Mm -hmm. um, and then the fifth one down should also be 0 0.1364. Then our outcome of one success and two failures is going to be 0 0.77 times 0 0.23 squared. And that comes out to be 0 0.0407. So make sure my folks at home are my life. My life people are in agreement. So anytime we have one success and two failures, I'm getting 0.0407. And then our last outcome that's different is the failure, failure, failure. So that should be 0 0.23 cubed. 0.0122. And for the most part, these should add to one. Plus, we have one, two, three, three of the 0.1364. Plus we have three of the 0 0.0407 plus we have 0 0.01 to two. And um, they add to one exactly. Are we doing okay so far? Yes. Um, so F says, find the probability that the first two are successful and the third player fails. So we specifically want success, success, failure. And we can just go to our table to find that in our distribution. That's um, the 0 0.1364. Then it says, find the probability that two succeed and one fails. And so there's actually three situations where that happens, right? That's the success, success, failure. That's success, failure, success. And that's failure, success, success. So that means there's three of these that satisfy this situation. So this probability is 0 0.4092. So F is only that particular situation with that order, and G is any two of them succeed and one fails, which actually happens three times. 
So H says, find the probability that at least one of a player succeeds. So I'm gonna pause the recording for just a moment and I'll let everybody at home work on these and we'll chime in here together. In this. <clears throat> so initially we thought that we would only include where we had one success. So that would be success, failure, 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 success, success, or I'm sorry, success, failure, 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 success, failure, or failure, failure, or success. But this says at least one. So this reminds us to go back to our course pack because at least one rule Um, reminds us to use the complementary definition. So let's go back and find the at least one rule. And the at least one is on page 156 in your course pack. So if we want to find at least one of some event, we're going to say one minus that event happening to all of our trials. And we have three trials because we have three, <clears throat> right? So probability of at least one success means we can say one minus none of them succeed. So we know where none of them succeed, right? That would be the FFF. <clears throat> so we can simply subtract that one situation where none of them succeed. So one minus the probability of failure, 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 which is one minus 0 0.0122, which is 0 0.987. <clears throat> Any questions on that one? <clears throat> so this is spelling out all eight of our outcomes individually. Now if we move to the third page of this worksheet here. Um, <clears throat> we still have our situation where we're on um, the likelihood of them making it is 77% and there's three randomly chosen players. Now we're going to bring in the topics of chapter six, to the same scenario. And it says, explain how this experiment is binomial and identify N, P, Q, S, F, and X. So N is there's three players, right? That's our three trials. Um, each player's outcome is independent of one another. And we have our definition of success and failure. So for this to be a binomial <clears throat> experiment, we have to have two distinct outcomes, right? And success and failure is um, made it, missed it. And probability of success is 0.77 and probability of failure is 0.23. And I might have had my one, two, three, and four switched around a little bit. Um, X is between zero and <coughs> N, which is three. So we could have zero successes all the way up to three successes, right? 
and help me out with number four. I think I got my three and four mixed up. Let's just see here. Um, no, <clears throat> I just three and four are kind of together here where I define success and failure, and then I made the probabilities, right? So my probabilities are right there. There's my four. And so if, if any one of these four outcomes are not true, then this is not a binomial experiment, but this one is for sure. Now B says complete the probability distribution using your calculator. Well, the cool thing is, as we already can use this, what we did here, because it says, what is the probability of no successes? Well, we can just go to our table and look that the one situation where there's no successes is 0. 0.0122. Now, we don't have to worry about this calculator entry because we're going to also practice stat crunch today. So no worries. We're going to make sure we get plenty of practice there. Um, <clears throat> what is the probability of getting one, exactly one success in the free throw? Um, that would be three times um, what Juan you can mention before, right? Three times the 0 0.0407, which is 0.1221. We're going to just use a table on page 535 to find these, and then we're going to go and validate everything with a step crunch. And then the other situation is, what is the probability of getting two free throws out of those three players? So that is actually on this page, letter G. All of these outcomes had two of successes, right? That was 0 0.4092. And then last but not least is, what is the probability of getting all three successes? And that was our first outcome up here on page 535.4565. And then, of course, validate that they add to 1.0. And then, I'd like us to take a minute here to go to Stan Crunch. Oops. So in stack crunch, um, <clears throat> we are going to go to stat and then calculators. And we're choosing the binomial calculator. Okay, and our n is three, so we have to change our setup. 
and our P is 0.77. And we want to find out what is the probability that exactly zero of them made their free throw? And hit enter, and that validates our 0 0.0122. Are you following okay, Jonathan? And then I want to validate what is the probability that one of them makes their free throw? That's 0.122. They have 1.222 if you round here, but ours is rounded um, as 0 0.1221. And then the probability that two of them make it is 0 0.4091 here, and we have 0 0.4092. And then the probability that three of them make it is 0 0.4565. So on these, once you have your setup together, you're good. Okay. So let's go back to our paper here. <laughs> so letter C says, Explain why this probability is discrete, be specific. And that is because you cannot make half of a free throw. I mean, you can, but it doesn't count, right? It counts as a miss. So, um, That is why it's discrete. Using this table, find the probability that two succeed and one fails. <clears throat> two succeed and one fails. Right here, we just go up to two succeed, and that's 0 0.4092 or 0 0.4091, depending on if you use stat crunch only. <clears throat> the last page from this worksheet is continuing with some things from chapter six, some things that we learned. So, so I suppose um, we still have our situation here with the NBA player. It says state N, which we did in the last page. So there's three and the probability of success is 0.77. Find the mean of the distribution, <clears throat> find the standard deviation, and then interpret. So the mean is n times p. So in that case, that's 3 times 0 0.77. So that's 2.31. And then the standard deviation. And don't forget, these are all in your course pack. I'm going to remind you of what page, because you will want to have the definition of the binomial experiment and what you have to look for from page 166 on your note sheets that you write extra, you're going to want to have this um, <clears throat> how to find it in stat crunch, stat calculator and binomial. Um, this part here on page 169 from your course back is already in your gold sheets, <clears throat> but you're definitely going to want to have these two formulas here for your mean and standard deviation from page 171 on your note sheets. And probably one of the interprets, just because um, Lo mentioned this last week, the interpretation of mean and standard deviation in chapter six is a little bit different than the wording in chapter three. So the square root, I'm sorry, the standard deviation is the square root of n, p, and q. And so for us, it's the square root of n, which is 3 times p times q, which is 1 minus 0 0.77. <clears throat> and that is 0 0.73 um, rounded properly. So letter D says, interpret the mean and standard deviation in the context. So I always start with my sample size. If um, or in a random group of 
three because n is three. So whatever your n is, three NBA players. You can expect two point three one of them to make their free throw. I'm going to give or take point seven three. players, right? <clears throat> it's an awkward one because again, they're discrete. So it feels weird to say that. So E through H is asking us to do some calculator entries in StatCrunch. So let's look at E. It says, find the probability that less than 12 of them will make their free throw. So less than, so probably that less than, that's a strictly less than, less than 12 of them make their free throw. So let's go to step crunch. And we have our scenario still pulled up, so that's nice. And we're gonna go down here and choose the less than, strictly less than, and we're gonna put in 12. Oops, I forgot this is, there's 18. You know what? I mix up, there's 18. So this, instead of being three, this should be 18. So let's compute this and we need to go back and look at our N, our N, our A and B and mix those up. So this is point, I just realized that this is 0 0.0974. So we need to go back. Oh, this looked a little weird. right here. This should be 18. So those of you watching the video are not losing it. Our mean and standard deviation are going to be a little bit different. So this is going to be 18 times 0.77. So that will be 13.86. And this will be the square root of 18 times 0.77. And this would be the standard deviation of 1.79. My mistake here in a random group of 18 NBA players, we would expect 13.86 of them to make their free throw, give or take 1.79 players. Again, I apologize for that mistake. <laughs> Okay, so now that we got that straightened out, it says find the probability that at least 15 of them make their free throws. So at least 15. So at least is going to be greater than or equal to 15. So 15 and beyond. So 15, 16, 17, or all 18 of them. So back here to stat crunch. So greater than or equal to 15, three, 0 0.3782. Then G says, find the probability that more than nine <clears throat> of them will make their free throw. So G is gonna be probably that more than nine, so it's strictly greater than nine. So while we're right here in that crunch, let's just go to greater than nine. That is 0 0.9888. Then H says, find the probability that exactly 10 of them, so X equals 10, 
make their shot? Would this be unusual? So this is going to be exactly so it's equals to 10. And that comes out to be 0 0.0251. Okay, so let's go back to our paper here. And here are the last two. And also make sure where it says, would this be unusual, explain. So yes, this would be unusual because this is less than 5%. Questions on this one. So that's all I have for today. Um, and if you have any other questions, you want to schedule some review time before the midterm, please let me know and I can schedule a specific time with you.